Good morning, welcome back to another video with a guy and his projects. Today I had big plans. Today I wanted to get a lot done. Um, and I'm still getting a lot done, uh, but those plans are gonna be cut short. Uh, I've got something to do. Uh, I found some parts for the Jeep. I found a front axle. It's a one ton, um, but it's in Tucson, which is about a two hour drive for me. So I'm gonna leave here pretty early this afternoon, drive out there, grab the one ton, come back. So that's gonna put a damper in what my original plan was, which was to get the head gasket, the rear main seal, the timing cover gaskets, the oil pan gasket, obviously with the rear main seal, the transmission pan gasket, and all these gaskets I was gonna try and get done. Uh, I'm probably not gonna make it that far. Um, I don't even know if I'm gonna finish the head gasket, but that's what we're gonna start with today uh, because I can finish up tomorrow. I've got tomorrow off as well, so. We're gonna do that. Um, not quite the uh, day that I had planned, but it's a day and uh, it's a, gonna be a good day. So I got up a little bit early. <clears throat> Let me rephrase that. I was going to get up a little bit early this morning <laughs> because I knew it's getting cut short to go to Tucson in the F-250, but uh, I ended up sleeping in. So it's like just after six right now, but it's all right. That gives us six hours to, uh, play around with this thing. So let's get started. First things first, we're gonna remove the hood to give us room and light while doing the head gasket. Uh, so to do that, we just removed the hood light and now we're gonna pop these hinge bolts loose. I do apologize at the time of this voiceover, I am running a little bit of a head cold. Um, I would not worry. I know President Biden has threatened a lot of us with death uh, if we don't get vaccinated, but I think I'm going to survive this bout. Anywho, uh, we're just going to remove the hood. You saw I put a box there as a spacer just to keep the hood from latching while I pulled these off the uh, studs. I did not want to do, I did not want to pull the hood off by myself with it standing up for fear of breaking the windshield. So by laying it down, uh, it just allowed me to have leverage on my own. All right, so first things we're going to remove is the air box. It's the most in the way of everything. So we're just going to peel that apart, peel all the hoses off, probably break all the plastic and rubber. Uh, this vehicle is very old and very original. So a lot of stuff breaks. Um, we're just going to go through pretty much everything connected to pretty much anything on the engine is going to get pulled apart, um, unbolted, unscrewed, whatever. Uh, this is your all your throttle cables, your cruise control, all that good stuff coming off the throttle body. Yes, I did break the cruise control uh, plastic clip. Uh, stay tuned. I'll show you how I fixed that later. Now we're going to pull the coolant hoses off of the uh, uh, the uh, blah 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 thermostat housing thank you and now I'm just going to vacuum with the wet dry vac all of the coolant out that I can to help eliminate, eliminate any mess later um, this did actually help quite a bit believe it or not all right so your rail right here on the driver side of your valve cover now that was actually really hard for me to get off it was seized in place i used a long screwdriver to help leverage it off once that broke off i could access all my bolts so i drew a little diagram uh, on a piece of cardboard where i put all the bolts um, most of them, I think all of them are actually the same size, but this did help. Uh, some of them are studs, some of them are bolts, uh, and this was very helpful in keeping track of what went where and all that good stuff. So pretty much that's all there is to it. I highly recommend doing something like this. Uh, if you're confident enough, then you're good. All right, so here is our exhaust. Uh, this thing makes so much noise. It's all broken. The hangers are broken. Uh, to get the header off the exhaust manifold, I went ahead and I unbolted the exhaust from there. And then I decided, you know what, this is so rusty and crappy, let's just get rid of the whole thing. So, boom, there goes the exhaust, there's your front pipe, and there's your catalytic converter and muffler, and your tailpipe. Alright, so... Uh, this is, once you get that done, there's some bolts. I couldn't get a camera down there. Just find all the bolts holding your intake and exhaust manifolds to the block and pull the gasket out. All right, cross my fingers there, hoping we can get this cover off. Um, and it came off really easy, actually. Uh, we kind of rolled it over in place and then pulled it out. 
and there she be. And then you're going to take your gasket off of there. You're going to have to clean all this up later, but we're going to take care of that later. Right now, we're just removing stuff. These bolts are in there super tight. Uh, I used a two-foot breaker bar to help break these loose, uh, and it was fine. You may need something longer if you don't have as much fat in your stomach for uh, leverage. Um, it wasn't bad, but yes, it was was a struggle for sure. Um, but yeah, just break them all loose, pull them all out. There's several. Um, <clears throat> something to note for the head bolts. On the inside of the valve cover, I had all bolts. Uh, the new kit I ordered came with two studs uh, for the inside of the valve cover. I just made up where I wanted to put them. I couldn't figure out where they're supposed to go, but they don't seem to affect anything differently. All right, so this pulley I removed, this is right in front of your AC compressor. Uh, there's a bracket that the compressor mounts on, and that screws into the head. So I had to take those two bolts out, which in order to take the two bolts out and move the compressor, I just went ahead and removed my belt. Uh, we replace it later, just put a brand new one in, because why not? And now you can get a little box wrench in there. Speed wrench would be recommended, uh, and pull the two bolts out holding that bracket to the head. At that point, I used a little breaker bar and just popped the head off of, uh, of the block. This thing is super heavy. Um, I actually make it look really easy right there in the video. Uh, I don't know what I ate for breakfast that morning, but apparently it was good stuff. All right, so down here, here is your pistons and cylinders and all that good stuff, whatever. Um, the coolant in there is probably just from the block, or I mean the head. Uh, I don't think coolant's running in these uh in these i think it just happened when i pulled everything apart but that's your gasket you're gonna have to remove that and scrape everything clean it was a pretty heavy duty uh, gasket i don't know that it's been replaced before maybe it has maybe it hasn't either way uh we're just doing this as a preventative measure with 250,000 miles and it's a 1994 all right, so now I grab the wet dry vac again. We're just going to clean up all the liquid in there and all the random parts of gasket. And then I'm going to sit here for the next six weeks and scrape gasket off. Uh, this took forever. That's not a wire wheel on my drill. It's a uh, it's like a soft wheel. I don't know what it's called, but I'll link them down below. All right, so then you're going to go to your block and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to clean all this up. I'm going to link all these gasket scrapers I use down in this description below as always. All right, new gasket's going to go on. Uh, pretty hard to mess this up. It only fits one way, um, so not too horrible. I'm just going to put that in place. Again, I make this look pretty easy, and I don't know why, because it did not feel easy. That thing is heavy, uh, and you're just going to gently and easily try not to mess up your gasket while you put this in place. I did not use any RTV on the head gasket. It's just there as it is. I will link the head gasket below or the gasket kit I used. All right, so now these bolts, I'm going to put one in each corner dry. I'm not going to torque them down. I'm just going to put them in place to make sure the gasket is in place and doesn't move. Uh, something to note when you put these bolts in, it does say wet torque specs. Uh, that's not to say use Loctite. Um, I used engine oil uh, because... Well, it's in the engine and it makes sense. So I used engine oil. doesn't really matter what weight. Just put some oil on the threads uh, when you torque them down. There's a whole torque sequence in the manual. Uh, I should have looked it up before I did this voiceover. I think it was something silly like 22 foot-pounds and then bump it up to like 70 foot-pounds and then 140 foot-pounds. I don't remember, but I will look on the bottom of your screen. I'll put torque specs there <clears throat> right now. Uh, the torque specs I used came out of the repair manual, uh, which I will also link down below. But uh, yeah, so get all these bolts in. Boom, 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 boom. I'm using just a little ratchet right now just to get them started and get the heads of the bolts or studs in place. Uh, once you get that, that's when I grab the torque wrench, uh, which is right here. Boom, 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 yada, 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 and moving on. Uh, the torque sequence usually has you starting from the center and working your way out. Uh, this is to eliminate any gasket issues, theoretically. It uh, doesn't mean you won't have any, but that's typically the reasoning. 
All right, so I'm using a crap ton of Teflon tape on this driver side bumper corner. Um, you can use pretty much any kind of sealant, I believe. Uh, I use the Teflon tape. This is just because it is in contact with the coolant. You don't want that leaking up and out or into the oil or vice versa. So that's where we're at with that. Now we're doing our final torque spec. All right, guys, quick update. I'm calling it quits for now. It is one o'clock. We didn't get as far as I'd hoped. I was hoping that I would get the uh, head gasket installed. Well, it actually is. I was hoping I'd get the valve cover and everything put back together. I wasn't expecting to get everything put together, but I was hoping to get the valve cover. Didn't get that far. I spent a lot of time cleaning the gasket surface on this, guys. Um, so, summary of where we're at now. Head removed everything cleaned um i tried to flush out the coolant passages as much as i could because it looks like there's oil in there too uh new head gasket down uh, i've got all these head bolts torqued down and that's where we're at right now so tomorrow hopefully i can put the valve cover on uh, the valve cover gasket put the i don't know why you're staring at me so hopefully tomorrow i can put the valve cover gasket on with the valve cover get the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold that's backwards intake manifold exhaust manifold mounted again and uh at that point we're ready to test minus the fact that uh well i broke pretty much every single one of these vacuum lines on this jeep so i'm gonna have to figure out vacuum line issues uh, but other than that we are looking good, hopefully. Uh, the head, I put a straight edge on it with a flashlight. I didn't see any light, um, so I think the head is straight. I don't know why there's oil in the coolant, but for now, we're going to put this together, find out where we're at. In the meantime, I gotta go get an axle for the front of this Jeep. It's gonna be a Dana 60, uh, two hours away. I'm gonna leave, oh, I'm gonna go take a shower right now and then take a two hour drive there and a two hour drive home. All right, it's the next morning. <laughs> so I'm kind of made a mess. It actually looks like more of a mess than it is. For some reason, I got a lot of drainage in my throat right now, but hopefully I'm not getting sick. But anyway, so it doesn't look like anything changed overnight, which is good. Um, <clears throat> so my first plan of attack, I'm gonna have to clean up the valve cover because it's got nastiness everywhere. Uh, once I get the valve cover cleaned up, we'll go ahead and put the rods and all that stuff in here. Put the valve cover on, and then I'm going to clean the mating surface on the intake and the exhaust manifolds. Uh, I'm going to do that after this is on so I don't end up with debris flopping over. Once those are in place, get them bolted in. I'll probably clean the throttle body because that's nasty. And then uh, after that, it's just a matter of remembering where I put all the bolts and nuts for everything. Um, because there it does seem to be some oil in the coolant passages, I'm going to hardcore flush this system out with the hose, um, and then I'm gonna put some coolant in it. I'm gonna run for a few miles, change the coolant, and do that again, and uh, maybe go a thousand miles, change the coolant. All right, so I got all of the push rods, the rockers, all that, whatever you want to call these in place. So this is weird, actually. I've never done this before. I've never actually gone. Uh, this is all new to me. So what I learned is that these push rods, if you're not careful, they can disappear all the way down into the cylinder head. I had to use a long pick to get one out, and uh, I was a little bit nervous for a minute there, but we got it. So, also they're not all sitting exactly how I wanted them to at first, and I was tightening them down against my better judgment, or what I thought was better, and then as I torqued them down to the 19 foot-pounds, uh, they all lined up perfect. So they weren't lining up when I was just hand tightening them, but when I torqued it down, they all fell into place pretty much perfect, which is weird. And I almost didn't do that because I was scared, but it seems to be working out, so, okay. So I ordered two types of gaskets. Um, originally I ordered the Felpro gasket when I was planning on just doing the valve cover to seal up the leaks. Uh, and then I decided to do the head gasket and I ordered a kit. And it came with this cork gasket. This cork gasket looks like a pain in the butt. So 
I'm going to end up replacing all these push rods and stuff later. So I was going to use the cork now because it's going to be temporary. However, I don't like it. So we're going to use the actual valve cover gasket that I ordered. And if we need to, then we'll go ahead and order another one if I need to replace this again later because this just looks so much nicer and easier to use. Plus it's blue, who doesn't like blue? Uh, but this one, you, the bolts will actually go around or into the gasket. So with the cork, you risk pushing the gasket in as you're tightening down. This will hold the gasket in place, which I like a lot better. Now for my favorite thing, more cleaning. I hate cleaning this stuff, but it is rewarding when it's done. I'm just using a crap load of brake cleaner and a fingernail brush and a dish brush from the kitchen. And I'm just working loose all the dirt, grud and grime and nastiness and grossness. Um, because one, it's just nice to have it clean. Two, when you go back to work on it later, you really, I really hate getting all nastiness all over my hands every time. Like I wear these blue gloves, but I don't prefer to wear them. All right, so we got the uh, cover on. Now we're just going to take in and every single bolt I'm pulling out to put back in, I'm cleaning with some brake clean just to get the grud, uh, grud off of the uh, bolts. We're putting our compressor uh, bracket back onto the head and now I'm going to clean up the intake manifold and exhaust manifold as best I can. It was kind of hard to get in there so I just did what I could and I'm putting the new gasket in here as well. Uh, this was pretty easy. Uh, there's a couple studs that it can line up onto and then you'll put your exhaust manifold back on first because they'll land on the same studs as well and your intake will be second. So where we're at right now, got a little bit of a complication and I'm a little bit frustrated. So uh, obviously we've got the, the valve cover on, uh, we got the intake on, the exhaust manifold on. Uh, both those were a pain in the ass getting to those bottom bolts, but I got them finally, took a while. Uh, but what I found now is that this gasket on the, for the intake and exhaust manifold is thicker than the one over here, than that one, uh, which you wouldn't really realize causing an issue, but it does on the water pump to mount the power steering to the water pump. I'm off just a little bit uh, and I can't match up the threads. Let's see if I'm gonna turn you upside down. See if we can see that. I cannot push that any closer. So I got that bolt. Oh, sorry. So we've got that bolt, and then we've got this bolt down here. I can't get either one of those on right now. Doesn't matter how much pushing and prying I do, I can't get this to go any further that way to get the threads to line up. Um, I could probably get them started and just force them in there, but then we're gonna cross thread it. Uh, and getting them out next time would be a pain and then I guess we would end up having to replace the water pump on the next go around which Maybe that's what we'll do. I don't know. But right now. That's my problem um, I think for now cuz I ain't taking the intake back off that was a pain in the butt So for now what I think I'm going to do is leave it without those two bolts in Which is sketchy because that's really the only thing holding this power steering to the rest of the pulleys uh, otherwise it's just mounted on the intake which is solid but i think what i want to do is once we're ready to fire this up fire it up let it go through a couple heat cycles see if i can torque down those bolts on the intake gasket and the exhaust gasket which will allow me to get just a little bit more space which will allow me to hopefully sink it in just a little bit further because man we just need like a hair we're just missing a hair so that's where we're at uh, what we're going to do in the meantime while I commiserate about that is the throttle body. Um, it's not the worst I've seen, but it's not the best, so I want to pull that off, and uh, we're just going to give that a good cleaning. We might as well. It's right here and almost off already. Um, we've already got the cables, which I broke. I don't know what to do about this yet. Uh, so the cables are all already off. Might as well clean it, so that's what we're going to do now. And more cleaning. Uh, I love, love, love cleaning. Uh, that's very sarcastic. I hate cleaning. I'm not somebody that likes to clean, but I like things when they are clean, so we got to clean. 
All right, so the throttle body is going to come off. The gasket's going to come off. Again, check the link below. Uh, I've got all this stuff linked. Again, using some brake cleaner, and look at all that nastiness. Brake cleaner is amazing. It just pulls it up. Uh, don't breathe it in a whole lot, and try not to get it on your bare hands. Uh, but yeah, so we're just going to clean it all up. We're going to exercise it a few times, open up that butterfly damper, and uh, just, yeah, clean it up. We got a toothbrush here. I like to buy the little cheapy eight packs of toothbrushes at Walmart and Fry's and wherever. Uh, I go through them quite a bit in the shop, and uh, they're just very helpful to get things clean. Okay, so new gasket going on, clean throttle body going on, just like it came off. Four bolts, no torque specs. All right, so now because we have uh, oil in the coolant, I'm just going to flush. This is one of the heater core hoses. Uh, I'm just going to push some water out through this is just hose water and uh, look how brown and nasty that is so something to know I did this several several times through every opening in the coolant system I could um, and I'd do it until it ran clear right there and then I'd switch and I'd go backwards and I'd back flush and I'd do it over and over and over uh, this is the radiator and how nasty it's coming out of the radiator right there uh, but it, I did this like five times on every opening of each hose and every time more brownness came out so be thorough and uh, get her clean. Welcome back. Quick update. Figured as long as I've got everything tearing apart, I'm replacing the lower radiator hose, the upper radiator hose, both heater hoses, um, essentially everything except the water pump and the radiator. I was like, you know what? I might as well just replace the water pump. Then everything in the cooling system except for the radiator has been replaced. The radiator I can do some other time uh, when I've got $250 for a uh, upgraded aftermarket one. <laughs> so I went to the store, got a water pump. Uh, I had to relocate the studs from the old water pump uh, down there to put on this water pump. This hose, for some reason, I had a heck of a time trying to get on. I finally put some jelly in there and it went on a little bit better. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just put it on now and install it with the hose on just because it's super, super hard to get on for some reason. Um, other than that, the only other thing we've got to do right now is this charge pipe uh, for the heater core. I got to install this on the water pump and then I can put the water pump on. Uh, that's where we're at. Water pumps right here. So then after the water pumps on, hopefully, theoretically, I can put the belt on. Hopefully figure out my alignment issue, my alignment issue with the uh, power steering bracket. And if all goes well, might be able to start it up. There's zero exhaust. I cut the exhaust right after the manifold. Um, so there's that, uh, but we'll get a new exhaust eventually. <laughs> Probably sooner rather than later because it's gonna, yeah, it's not gonna be good. Uh, so anywho, that's where we're at. Continuing on. All right, so I broke this uh, throttle valve cable. Uh, this is the cable, it's going down to the transmission and assist with the shifting or something like that. So it broke right at the C-clip. I still can't get the C-clip off. I'm pretty sure I will break it if I pull it off. So I'm gonna leave it in place. I ordered what I hope is the right size replacement for this plastic piece. There's a guy that does some 3D printing and sells them. I don't know if it's going to fit and it's super expensive. I ordered it uh, because I don't think my solution is going to last, but it might. So what I'm going to do is I got some of this JB Weld and JB Weld and uh, a plate and some toothpicks to mix and apply. The hard part about this, I think, is going to be to not get the JB Weld on this portion right here, the metal portion or the cast portion, whatever this is, steel of some sorts. I'm not sure how that's gonna work, uh, but we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, I'll put it together and then I'll vice grip it and hold it for, I think this says a couple of days, 24 hours or something, so let's, let's, uh, See what we can do. Worst case scenario is uh, it don't work, right? So this is going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. We barely hardly need enough to mix. So we'll just do a little blob like so. No 
I'll grab the hardener. A little blob like so. I'm gonna grab one of our toothpicks. Use a popsicle stick, you can use whatever you want to use. I'm just gonna mix the heck out of this. And it's turning a nice little gray. Okay, once it's a nice gray color, I believe, I think it's ready to apply. I'm gonna grab just a little tiny dollop. That's actually probably too much. I wonder if I can get you guys in closer. So I really just wanna put this on the very edge of this plastic because I do not want to get it on the steel portion because that would keep it from rotating in the future. Okay, I think I got a little bit too much over here and I don't want it to fall over onto the steel. So just move it. I like this bead on this side, this side's too big. Sorry, right, we'll just roll it over. Put your Q-tip on the plate out of the way so you don't dip your arm in it. Now, and I just made a mess. Yep, that did not go. <laughs> when I dry fit it, this fit perfect. Okay, there we go, that's perfect fit. And I probably just jacked this up and got it all over that metal portion, but we'll find out tomorrow. So that's clamped in place, we'll let it dry, and uh, hopefully tomorrow, we find out this worked out perfectly. Cross your JB welded fingers that I didn't get the JB weld on the steel portion and this will still rotate and the plastic will hold and uh, hopefully we're good to go because that's a really cheap fix right there. And if it works, then fan fabulous. I would have really rather have taken that uh, plastic piece off of the, the steel to do that so you don't risk making a mess like I just did, but I don't think it's coming off. If it comes off, it's gonna break again. So this is where we're at. I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow. All right, so we're gonna test this. It's been over 24 hours. Take our vice grips off. Let's see if I can get you guys in there close. Doesn't look pretty, but let's see. Ooh. Okay, it's loose from the ball and it works. Let's see if we can go full throttle. Oh yeah. Fix worked. Woohoo. JB Weld to the rescue. So, I don't know how long it's going to work, but JB Weld in the past has done me well. So, let's hope for the best. Crossing fingers.